I went from this to this in nine months. Stick around to find out how. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. <clears throat> today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. The topic for today within our February topics of how to, to keep and maintain how to start and maintain a, a carnivore way of life. Today we're going to talk about food aversion. And then we're also going to have a little update because today, well, the day you're seeing this video, I'm at exactly the nine month mark on my carnivore journey. And I don't normally scale in the middle of the week, but I wanted to be able to give you an exact number. And I am down 134 pounds in nine months. Yeah, I was 135. I don't know if it was muscle or water weight or whatever, but I'm not actually down 135 right now. I'm down 134. Close enough. But as you can see, I'm out here at the park. I'm going to take the old wagon path out to the overlook. And then we'll see how I feel when I get out there. I'm not planning on a great big huge hike today. Um, but like I said, we'll see how I feel when I get out to the overlook. After the, this first little just mile section here. Um, but I got my trekking poles with me. Excuse me. This is the first time I've been out here at the park since I fell that day. Um, so we shall see how it goes. But I will jump right into the first topic of food aversion right after I get a little warm-up hiking in. But from your perspective, it'll be like I was never gone. Thanks to the magic of editing. See you on down the trail in just a little bit. And just like that, here I am back. I am not out at the Overlook yet. I'm at that bench that's about halfway between the Visitor Center and the Overlook on the old wagon path. But I thought this was a good place to stop because there's a lot of traffic out here, which means there's probably going to be a lot of people out at the Overlook. So recording a section of video out there might be a little problematic. So let's go ahead and talk about food aversion. What is it? You know, you've been humming along on your carnivore diet, you're two, three, four months into it. At some point, you're going to open up your fridge to pull out a steak or hamburgers or even bacon or eggs or whatever it is that you're eating. And you're going to look at it and you go, ugh, I don't want that. And everything you look at, the thought of just cooking it up makes you sick to your stomach. It happens to everybody. Luckily, most people it only happens once. Some people experience on a experience this on a semi-regular basis every three or four months, but most people it only really happens to once. It happened to me once, and I haven't had any problems with it since. But this is the one time that I will suggest fasting. You know, pick whatever your favorite food is, whether it be a steak or hamburger patties or bacon, whatever your favorite food is, you know is your favorite food, but the thought of eating it just makes you sick. Put it front and center in your fridge. And then just fast. Don't eat. You know, if you get hungry, have a little electrolyte drink, have a pinch of salt do all the things I've talked about previously about how to avoid you know your cravings but just keep fasting and keep looking at it front and center in your fridge and at some point I promise you you're going to get hungry enough that you're finally going to open up the fridge and go oh yeah you and me we're about to do some business 
and you're going to heat up that bacon under the hamburger patties or you're going to cook that steak and you're going to just destroy it and it's all over with but it does happen to, to everybody um one of the th other videos i would suggest on this carnivore quest did an excellent video about this um I believe they call it the Great Wall of Doom or something like that. But it was two two months ago or so. So just go ahead and head on back. <clears throat> head on over to their channel. They did a really great video about this. But be aware that the Wall of Doom, as they call it, <clears throat> is something that's going to happen to you. It happens to most people and it happens usually just once. But again, just put your favorite food front and center in your fridge and wait till it looks good this might just be a day it might be two days you might even get a three or a four day fast out of it but trust me when your body gets hungry truly truly hungry the food aversion will melt away and you will be right back into it again and you'll probably have lost some weight because of it because you didn't eat anything for two or three days but that's the primary topic of today's video for as it pertains to the February series. I'll have a couple more thoughts on that down at the end of the video if you want to stick around. Um, I'm going to go on down the trail here, see where I get to. And when we get there, I'm going to sit back down and talk to you about my nine-month update because I've been carnivore for exactly nine months now. I'll see you on down the trail. Back again. Here we are approaching the parking area up by the overlook. And the first thing I wanted to talk to you about for my nine month update is I'm out here hiking on a trail. I couldn't have done this nine months ago. When I started this, I could barely stand up for two to two and a half minutes without severe pain both from arthritis and spinal stenosis. I was going day by day, surprised when I woke up every morning the next morning. Then I found carnivore. And here, just nine months later, I've got my life back. There's some tricky roots right here at the end of this path as I get down onto the parking lot. And then I'll talk some more as I cross the parking lot. Okay. And just like that, we are in the Overlook parking lot which is under video surveillance, according to the sign, which is awesome. There aren't as many cars up here as I thought there'd be. There's just three of them right now. Yeah, the, the mossy stuff growing up through the cracks in the parking lot are starting to turn green and the grass I don't know how well you can see it along the edge of the parking lot is starting to green up as well so spring is coming folks it may not be here yet but it's supposed to get up to 70 today and 70 tomorrow and then there's a chance of rain for the next three days it figures Friday Saturday Sunday it's supposed to rain again. Another three days of rain. We certainly don't need more rain. But if it moves us one step closer to spring, I'll take it, I guess. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, the big, the big one is I've, you know, of course, completely reversed my type 2 diabetes. When I was first diagnosed with diabetes, my A1C was 10.3. At my last lab check, my A1C was 4.8. And you can go back and watch my just after 
Thanksgiving video where I talked about the, the cake that I ate and how my blood sugar reacted. So that's why I say I've completely reversed or cured my type 2 diabetes because my insulin response is fantastic. I'll talk to you some more in just a moment. I'm just going to come up here to the overlook and look around. For those of you that haven't seen this view before, I'll just shut up and let you take it in. Absolutely amazing. So besides losing all the weight and being able to not just stand up, but get out here and hike, besides all of that, type 2 diabetes, I had fatty liver disease. That's completely gone. My liver markers are lower than they've been in well, I can only look at my records for five years back, so they are the lowest I've ever been on those five-year records. My stage one chronic kidney disease is gone. Again, my liver, mar my kidney markers are lower than they've been in the last five years. Now granted, I wasn't super healthy five years ago, so that may not be saying a whole lot, but the, uh, the missionary to Guatemala, um, Brother Donate, who he likes to say, when I'm out on the missions trail collecting money, I tell him my last name is Donate which is a really good name for a missionary. But he is also a doctor. And he was questioning, because his brother does carnivore, so he knew about it and was in favor of it. But he was curious about some of my lab markers. And he... Uh, so I went back and I looked up the specific ones he wanted to, to hear about. And uh, he said, man, you're doing great. Just keep on doing what you're doing. I'm all the way out here at this bench. I'm going to sit down take just a little bit of a breather. And because I still feel pretty good, it's the longer way around. But because it's my nine-month anniversary, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but I'm going to take my road protectors off of my trekking poles to reveal the spikes underneath that I've never actually used for anything. And I'm going to go down the big set of steps, which is probably a little ambitious for my first time back out on trail, because I've only covered just a little over a mile and a quarter to get to this point. And it's about another three and a half miles back to the car going this way but that'll make for just under five miles and if I feel like I want some more walking when I get back I can do some laps to to round that out and make things a little better make it bigger but 
I think I'll probably be tired after close to five miles on the trail today. Okay, here we go. I'm going to stop the video for just a second to have a fresh start on the on the bob cam before I start down the steps. And then when I get back to you, oh yeah, those sound a lot different on pavement, so I got to probably just not use them there. But I'm going to stop the video, restart it. And then when we come back, I'll be going down the steps and I will cue the music. And just like that with the magic of editing, I am back. I hope you enjoyed those steps. I did. As I've said in previous videos, exercise... 
hope I'm not coming down with something. I sat next to Dale last night in the last service, and he had a cough. I certainly hope I'm not coming down with something. But anyway, <clears throat> exercise <clears throat> is not a punishment for what we ate. Exercise is a celebration of what our body can do. And if you think about this, nine months ago, when I started this diet, I literally could not stand for more than two to two and a half minutes without extreme pain. I mean, and the longer I say, you know, if you, it, some people say, well, you just got to fight through that pain. No, it just, it's one, it was one of those pains in my lower back that just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And the couple of times I tried to fight through it, I'd stand for four or five minutes trying to power through it. When I pushed it that far, I sat down and could not get back up for several hours. I mean, it was excruciating. And now, well, you saw the steps. I just did that. And it's only nine months later. So if you're still thinking about it, wondering about it, thinking, well, maybe this is a good idea, maybe it's not, what are you waiting for? Just jump in and do it. Well slowly transition into it. I do not recommend just jumping straight in the way I did. Um, unless you've got two or three weeks to just hang around your bathroom because if you just jump straight in you're gonna you're gonna run into some bathroom issues. But if you're like me and you're retired and got nothing better to do except get healthy, go ahead, jump right in. It won't actually hurt you as far as I know. Um, if anybody has any different information about that, feel free to share it down in the comments. Now that we're at the nine month mark, go ahead and share what your progress has been down in the comments. Everybody knows my story that watches my videos, but let's get some stories going of people that are actually watching my channel. Um, because I know people love to read other people's comments. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, that's all. I'm just, I decided to talk to you while I'm sitting here. I'm at the campgrounds, the group campground area. Fire pit back there. And it's, if I remember right, it's a little over two miles back to the truck from here, going that way. It's slightly shorter if I go back the way I came, but I don't want to go all the way up those steps again. So the long way it is. Um, maybe next time I come out, I'll try this loop the other way and actually go up those steps. We'll see. Um, my shoulder is starting to bother me just a little bit. Not a lot, just I can feel it, but I think, I think pushing my shoulder to where it doesn't hurt, but I can feel it, is uh, probably going to help it with the healing process, because it's healed all it's going to heal at this point. I mean, it's been, what, three weeks since I fell? Maybe even four? I just don't remember. But it, uh, it's probably, I'm sure it will heal more a little bit, but I now need to strengthen the muscles around it better. <clears throat> so that's what I'm working on today, getting out here, doing some hiking. It feels so good to be back out here in the woods on this trail. Absolutely fantastic. Well, anyway, I'm going to drink a little more water, get down to some hiking, get back to the truck, and I'll either check in with you at the truck or from back over in the church parking lot. But there will be a little ending to this video. I'll see you on down the trail, guys. Here I am back again. As you can see, I've gotten out of my hiking clothes. I'm back to the trailer in the church parking lot. Just been getting the, the video edited together. When I do the split screen with the bob cam, it takes a lot more editing than than the other videos, so I've been at it for a while now. But uh, one of the things I forgot to talk about on the uh, nine-month update that I'm sure some people are interested in, my blood pressure. I used to take three blood pressure medicines, and it was still running 140 to 145 over 
96 to 100. It was not well controlled even with three blood pressure medicines. I am off all blood pressure medicines and this morning when I woke up it was 114 over 68. I can't be uh, too upset with that. <clears throat> Overall, I used to take 13 meds in the morning, 9 in the evening, plus pain pills throughout the day, and now I take just one. And I hope to get off that when I get back up to Omaha this spring. It's my blood thinner that my cardiologist wanted me to continue taking through the winter. Um, and then he said we'd do some more tests when I got home. And he said at the rate I was going, and of course this was, you know, 65 pounds ago or so. He said at the rate I'm going, he sees no problem with getting off of it, but he'd like me to continue through this winter. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going from 13 in the morning to 9 at night to just 1. Um, so that's the update on that. I'd forgotten how hard that, even though the sand trail looks fairly flat, which is the loop from the campground back up to the parking lot that I took, the sand trail to the Longleaf Trail and then back into the parking lot. Because um, the steps you saw me descend, the parking lot that I park in and the, the top of the overlook look, are at about the same level and you saw how much descent there was going down those steps in such a short period of time well if you don't you know you you may not notice it but from the campground back up to the parking lot where i park my truck is one long steady uphill climb the same distance that i came down in the steps but it's just you know a more gradual thing but when i hadn't been out there for a while like today and was starting to get a little tired you really notice how much that uphill grade wears on you but uh, uh, the bottom line is I didn't it it wasn't quite five miles it was 4.76 miles but I did it all leaving here going to the park walking the 4.76 miles Plus stopping for a couple of breaks to talk to you guys on camera while I was sitting down. And got all the way back here in just under two hours. So that seems like a pretty good pace to me. Just remember though, the, the great big wall of doom, as Carnivore Quest says, it's out there. It's waiting on you. You're going to run into it at some point. But just relax. Keep your good food your favorite food in the front of the fridge and you know you may have to, to end up fasting a day two days three days maybe even four before the food aversion goes away but it will go away and at that point you probably aren't going to see it again you might because there's a few people that do but most people only run into that one time that's what i've got for you today guys i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget, get out there, be 1% better today. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you tomorrow.